Hi, Internet. Long time no see. Uh, there hasn't been an episode of The Tech in quite a while, and that's your fault, really, because you're bastards. That's, that's the way I treat my audience. Kylie's in the studio today running the camera. What's up? I don't know if I can hear you. Yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> Hello. That was Kylie over there saying, hey, yo. <laughs> He's having coffee. And I shall be doing some news for you guys. Uh, the reason the tech has not been around is, uh, you know, I want to do regular content for you guys, but I've been working on the website. The website is officially finished. Everyone needs to go there right now. We're trying to build a community of intelligent people. Um, I guess it's really going to be geared more towards people who are into hardware, into writing software, into writing games, developing games, or playing video games. Mostly PC. If you're a console mouth breather, you can come hang out as well. We'll accept you into our community. I didn't mean to just insult you by calling you a mouth breather, you idiot. Oh, God. I'm so bad with console people. Speaking of idiots, what the hell is the University of Florida thinking? Earlier this week, the University of Florida decided to eliminate their computer science department. Now, the computer science department, um, it cost about $1.7 million a year. Now, here's the, here's the really interesting thing. There's a massive need in Florida for STEM jobs. That's uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So there's, there's a lot of needs for graduates in, I guess, the STEM area. So Florida looks at all this data, and they go, you know what, well, they really need a bunch of graduates, but you know what, screw you, state. Now, okay, all that happened, right? That's, they've saved $1.7 million, and they've eliminated the computer science department, which is extraordinarily important in this day and age. Um, at the same time, they put $2 million extra dollars into the athletics program, which is already, already has like a $99 million budget. So athletics, around $100 million. I'm not going to complain about that because it's, you know, it's, that, that brings in a lot of money for the school. They sell hats and paraphernalia and mustaches that say UF or whatever, and they and their, their teams are very good. The, the basketball team did well. The football team does well. So I'm not going to complain about that. And, you know, people that are at the university uh, have been quick to point out that, you know, that these two budgets are very different things. But I'm here to point out that uh, the priorities seem to be um, kind of in the wrong area. You guys have to have a, a computer science department. That just makes no sense, unless you wanted to become, like, the first the first professional I guess the first uh, pro athletics preparatory school, like it's a fast track to the NBA and a fast track to uh, NFL. Have they, have they got that? Have you heard of that before? Like a school that like guarantees you, you come here, it's like preparatory for the uh, the big leagues. Right. I don't know. We are in Kentucky. Yeah, we are in Kentucky. Like everyone, everyone, like all starting five, well, actually the first, the starting five plus the six man, all over going to the NBA. Right. And they're going to be like the first pick, the third pick, the ninth pick. It's going to be ridiculous. Um. So... Uh, one other thing I want to say about that, I, I just came from Florida, hated my time down there, and um, there's a real need in that area for computer jobs, and it's not just like something you hear about, you know, people saying like, um, I really need people. It's something that the companies are freaking out about, and here's the extent that they're freaking out. Driving around, um, there's one company that really needed people to come, you know, work IT jobs. So they bought a billboard. I'm driving, I look over and I see a billboard, and the billboard says, do you know Linux? We need you. Please call us. They had to get a, bill, a billboard. They've, they've bypassed the traditional methods of using like WAN ads and, and Craigslist and a different, you know, a career websites, job, whatever website, monster.com, career something.com. That's how desperate they are. University of Florida. Oh, my. Yeah, they have no idea what they're doing. I, <laughs> I can't. I, I can't even. All right. Next up. Uh, in some good news. For, uh, for cell phones and good news for Android users, the Galaxy Nexus is now available um, on Google Play, free, no, I mean not free, available free of contracts, not free, it's $399, but um, no contracts, and uh, this, this phone is unlocked, so you can use it with whatever carrier you want to. How cool is that? Now, there's been kind of a fight going on. Google did something that's a little bit sneaky, and I love what they've done here. They've gotten themselves really embedded in, you know, um, into all these different markets with you know, T-Mobile and their Sprint, and, and you can go anywhere and get uh, an Android phone. Now, with the first few uh, versions of Android, the, the phone companies were able to make their own versions. You know, like you get a T-Mobile phone, and T-Mobile's probably the worst com company on the planet. Let me turn this down. People messaging me, shut up, people. Now, T-Mobile, you get a phone like this, and, and, and you open it up, and you can barely use it because there's so much bloatware. There's like T-Mobile My Apps, and oh my god, order a pizza.com, and all these things that T-Mobile got paid to put on your phone. Well, now with the new version of Android, uh, the new like Android 4.0, Google's cutting down on that. They're kind of locking up their, their service because they already know that people want Android, and they already have an established market in all these areas, so 
now they're taking the control back themselves and they're going to take care of the customers. That's one thing I like about Google. I know people are complaining about them becoming a big evil company, but a lot of people that are complaining about them being extraordinarily evil are other evil companies who are angry at Google's success. Success. They're successful. Very successful. But that's really what I see. I mean, of course, I've done evil things. All corporations do evil things. But so also really cool that you're going to be able to get a version of a phone like this, which I imagine the ROM is going to be nice and clean. I'd install a custom ROM on this thing. T-Mobile. Idiots load that thing up with all kinds of stupid applications. I, it really, it could barely even keep up with itself. It was so laden with uh, ridiculous applications. Ivy Bridge is out. Am I going to get an Ivy Bridge? Uh, I might look into it. Uh, let's talk for just one second about the Ivy Bridge. Now, the 30, uh, 3770K is uh, really the flagship. And, and what's interesting right now is it's, it's priced at almost the same level that the 2600K is. So should you get that one or should you get the 2600K? Well, I, I'm definitely going to go for this one because it, um, you get more performance per watt, which is a big deal over time. You'll end up saving money that way. Um, but the overall performance is not that much difference. There's not that much difference at all. I mean, a little bit of difference. Some games, some applications. Um, I'm going to recommend one at the current price um, over the uh, 2600K. However, keep an eye out. Since these are out, the 2600K's price may drop. I'm kind of predicting it in the next month or so. And if it drops 50 bucks, I would still recommend the 3770K. But if it drops like 100 bucks, that's going to be a different story. Especially if you're saving money on your CPU to be able to put into your GPU and you're building a gaming rig. So... I'll post an article, you know, like a, an, an Ivy Bridge um, buyer's guide, if you will. I'll post an article up there as soon as I can. A little Ivy Bridge buying guide. Nate is sending me messages. Hi, Nate. Thank you for sending me messages. He always sends me messages while I'm making the tech. Okay. Next up now, NVIDIA is uh, currently snooping around some other foundries. What's going on is they, they're, they're using a foundry. Who are they with? I uh, forgot who, who they're with. I've got it written down here, though. Uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Now, they're using that company right now, and that company, um, you know, they've been working with it for a long time, but NVIDIA's not exactly happy. One, things that, one of the things that that company does is they charge per chip. So every time they make a chip, NVIDIA has to pay for it, even if that chip is no good, and that, it goes in the trash. So NVIDIA's like, okay, we're paying, like, a per chip price, and you guys are throwing some of them away. That's not fair. Uh, the other thing that the NVIDIA is a little bit upset about is NVIDIA wants to move away from 300-millimeter wafers. They want to go to 450-millimeter wafers, and they want to do it now. Uh, well, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company said that they can't do that until 2015. So where it is is that uh, Samsung has sent NVIDIA uh, some sample chips to take a look at, and NVIDIA has also been talking to global foundries. I'm going to let the irony just sink in for a minute. Global Foundries is an AMD spinoff company. Now, AMD recently sold all their shares in Global Foundries, and NVIDIA calls and says, Hey, Global Foundries, how you doing? So that's kind of funny. Indeed. Oh, that's good. Mm. So good. I'm going to drink it, but not right now. Drink some more in a minute. Okay, um, more news. Of, of the hardware sort. sort. Um, AMD has announced their 7900 uh, um, series mobile GPUs, 28 nanometers in your, uh, in, your GP, in your mobile GPU. That's nice. 28 nanometer technology. Um, now, uh, let's talk about what's so significant, significant about this. This comes at about the same time as you're going to start seeing some Ivy Bridge um, laptops roll out. And the Ivy Bridge does do uh, gaming on board. So, I mean, th there is graphics processing uh, capabilities already. Not an extreme amount. I saw a laptop at uh, CES with the Ivy Bridge uh, prototype playing Rage, and it was uh, it was running okay. I think they were running at like 1440 by 900 or something like that, but it was running okay. But it's not running anywhere near as cool as it would run if, um, say, you put like a 7970M. So take a look around. You're going to start seeing some, uh, some awesome, ridiculously fast laptops with Ivy Bridge CPUs and AMD 7970 uh, chips in there. Now, the 7970 mobile is about the same speed as the 7870 uh, desktop version. That's insane. So that's pretty cool. Let's talk about some video games, shall we? Now, I'm going to address this. Everyone's talking about Episode 3, Half-Life 2 Episode 3, all over the Internet. Um, I've noticed The Verge starts a lot of this stuff. Like, The Verge will... Those guys are just problem starters. They, they, they see an article, and then they take it in some new direction, and then everyone on the planet, like, syndicates their article and writes their own spin on it, and everyone's talking about Episode 3, and it's all based on a podcast that uh, Gabe Newell appeared in. So Gabe Newell, 
Uh, he was he was on a podcast with Seven Day Cooldown. Hi, this is Gabe Newell, and you're listening to the Seven Day Cooldown. So Gabe Newell was on the podcast. They didn't even talk about episode three. Like, no, they didn't even mention it. And everyone's talking about it on the internet. And that's like the, the headline of all the articles. Journalists, come on. I know you're trying to get hits, but come on. They talked about Ricochet 2, which was a game that came out, like, it was like the first game on Steam. I remember Ricochet, it was like an old mod for Half-Life. Well, they're talking about Ricochet 2, and they talked about that, and and Gabe Newell talked about how his team, like, would move from one, or his staff would move from one team to another, and they kind of had that going on in their offices. Nobody said anything about Half-Life 2 Episode 3, so shut up, everybody, just shut up. Come to your house and put a snake in your bed while you're asleep. Yeah. Another interesting article, I'm just going to put a link to this on uh, Tech Syndicate because I don't feel like talking about it, but VentureBeat wrote, wrote a really interesting article called The Four Lessons Other Developers Can Learn uh, from the Valve Employee Handbook. And this is pretty cool. It's a really cool article, and I hope you read it. I'm going to link to that. Yes. All right, guys, we need to save the Internet. The fat people who wear suits and, you know, do court stuff, they're all uh, trying to destroy the Internet, so we've got to save it. I'm going to put a link to a petition you can sign to help stop uh, CISPA. That's the new... SOPA, uh, they just disguise them into everything. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. And as soon as we stop this one, we're going to have to stop another one. But we've got to stop this one. We've got to sign a petition. It'll take a minute of your time. And next month when they come up with uh, CISPA 2.0 and, or, or SOPISPA, SOPISPA? I don't know. Whatever these idiots come up with because they're scared of losing their power on the Internet. Um, Firefox 12 has officially been released today. I haven't tried it out yet. I just want to let you guys know if you guys are interested in Firefox, you can go download the newest version. I'm sure it's spiffy. WebGL. Hey. So, yeah, I'm going to try out some of the uh, new WebGL experiments that Google has been doing. See how they work on Firefox. They were working great on Chrome last I checked, but uh, you can also get it for Mac OS X if you're a Macintosh person. Oh, yeah, one last thing. Speaking of Macintosh people, if you are someone who wants to build a Hackintosh, let me just uh, open up Tech Syndicate. Put an article on there last night. The new Gigabyte Z77 motherboards are amazing for building Hackintosh computers. Um, in particular, the one that everyone's really talking about is the GA Z77 DS3H. Now, normally when you're building a Hackintosh, you're going to have to like mod your BIOS in some way. That's dangerous, and it also can create a lot of headaches. If you do something wrong, you try to install it, OS X goes into kernel panic and freaks out. It's It's a mess. And uh, what's interesting about this one is the Apple, a lot of the native Apple drivers work just fine. The audio works right out of the box. Um, the internet or the Ethernet drivers works just fine. Um, and and I've, I've put reference to one particular test here on, on Tech Syndicate. And the guy was using a, an Intel 2500K i5. The onboard graphics worked natively out of the box. So if you're looking to build a Hackintosh, that could be a way to go. Um, feel free to, you know, head over to techsyndicate.com. And tell me what you think of that. And if you guys are building a Hackintosh, let me know. And we'll be happy to help you out in any way. I built a few. And Windows built like 90. Wait a minute. Is Apple listening? We've never built anything. Excellent. All right. I think that's um, about all I'm going to talk about right now. Right now, I just want to tell you guys the Tech Syndicate is finished. I'm going to be launching a user blog like probably tonight or tomorrow morning. So everyone can, can write blog articles. Um, the forums are, um, some people are kind of, I mean, the people from Raise the World, some people don't know what to do with the new website. They get there and they're like, someone even told me the other day, they're like, it's too nice, dude. I don't like it. It's like, it's too nice. Like, really? It's too nice? They're like, yeah, it looks too pretty. And and they feel like it's, I don't know, do people feel like it's corporate? Do they feel like, I don't know, what, what's going on with the new website? People who are from the old Raise the World, because the new people who are showing up, they love it. It's a much, much, much more functional platform. And uh, the designers on this website were Wendell and I. I did a lot of the, the, the coding for the front end, like the style and everything, and Wendell did all the, the SQL and uh, a lot of the database stuff, and I don't know, he did a lot of the PHP as well, but there's even some custom plugins, so we put a lot of work into this. Take a look at it, see what you think. Feel free to start you know, talking in the forum a little bit. It is going to be a safe place to hang out, and the audience there is way smarter than Facebook. I dare you to ask a hardware question on there and see how many people respond to you within 10 minutes. There's a lot of lurkers. A lot of the old Raise the World members, they are lurking. And as soon as someone says, like, hey, what's the best CPU? 10 responses like that. So it's kind of weird. It's transition phase for the new new website. Anyway, uh, tell me what you think. Send me emails. 
at uh, inbox at raisetheworld.com. See you guys next time.